facility, they have alley scrapers. And an alley scraper is a scraper that runs 24 seven up and down the alley. Um, well, you can see this, all the, all the ropes running through there. So what it does is it runs all the way to the end. <clears throat> when it reaches the end, the, and we'll maybe see one, but the bars will open up and it scrapes the alley all the way down into this collection pit that's underneath me. <clears throat> with this facility is different than most facilities as with these alley scrapers that run 24 seven, it stays a lot cleaner. It's a lot of facilities will scrape twice a day. This way it's getting scraped constantly. So we get the freshest manure that we can. Um, it's good for cow health because there's usually not manure buildup mm -hmm. that they're walking through. It's good for the hoof, the hooves of the animal. So I'm trying to see if there's one. Is that Spectra you guys are using here? What's that? Is that, that Spectra line? I don't know what the type of cable is. That, that was installed by somebody else. And the dairy manages all of this. Angar does not manage the <clears throat> this side of the manure. But it's all, it's all rope. The cows have gotten used to when the scraper comes through, they just step right over it and it's, it's no big deal. Did they install the scraper because they have the digester, or did they just do that for the health? The, the scraper was here before before the digester was. Yeah. So Adeline tries to take great care of their animals. They try and keep the healthiest animals possible. So, like I said before, animal health is is number one to being a su successful farmer. Sure These are all cows that are just coming back from the parlor. So they just got milked and they're coming back to start eating. They got the food. The mixer just went through there. Mm -hmm. So, so go ahead. how much uh, manure do you get per cow? Is there a... Uh, Mike? 18 pounds. 18 pounds per cow per day? On this farm, I, there's there's wash water that gets mixed in from the parlor and that kind of stuff. But on this farm, when it's a dry day, we take about seventy-four thousand gallons of manure every day. Seventy-four thousand yep. gallons every day for fifteen hundred cattle. Yep. Um, other sites we have that have different climates, they some of those do do a pre-separation. They'll take. Before the manure goes into the, the digester, they'll run it over like a slope screen yeah. and drop the thinner liquid out and then take the, thick, the thicker stuff and shove that into the digester. Right. That's usually primarily used on like a flush system. Mm -hmm. So they'll give us the, the thicker stuff and then they'll take the thin manure and, and wash the alleys with that. Right, so that's on, on a flush system like yep. you were down in California yep. or something like that. Correct, or in eastern Washington. Or, yep. yep, okay. Um, but here with being a scrape system, we can divert it to the lagoon mm -hmm. on a high flow day, but then we lose out on what value is in there because mm -hmm. there's no way to separate water from manure. So on a dairy like this, what does a heavy rain cost you in terms of, of methane with with all your technology that's in place? Um, I would say with a heavy rain, we could drop around 25 kW average throughout the day. Throughout the day, so, is this a is this a 450 or 500 or? This engine yeah. will produce 750 kW. Okay. So it have, it normally runs around 450 to 550 between that range. Okay. Okay. So and we'll see that when we go up there. But yep, yep. The big thing is is you on the existing. You know, you were talking about the water and the water collection yep. and adding these other different components into it. You're basically what you're doing is you're taking the digester and you're putting it into their existing manure. You don't want to, uh, your biggest concern is the dairy farm wants to run as is and you don't want to add all these extra things into it because you're going to get more operation and maintenance, you're going to get a higher capital cost, and then your payback gets down lower and lower. You know, so the big thing is, is not to mess around with the existing manure infrastructure for the dairy 
Christ. They're the ones giving you the manure. You want to keep them happy. Right. That makes sense. Second reason is your capital cost. Yep. Yep. And your digester is pretty much an add-on to the existing system that they have. So this is really, it's more of a, it's more of a, to think of it, it's more of a manure management. Correct. Than, and nutrient management than um, actually like a, a real business case for someone to go out and, yeah. and do. Yeah. Okay. And that's Correct. the biggest thing. Yep. You know, a lot of these dairy farmers are looking at the methane that otherwise would go to the lagoon. Well, why don't we trap that? Yep. It's an extension of the cow's stomach. Yep. You know, is what we always say. Um, and then they get the benefits of bedding and the other stuff from that. Yep. All right. I have a quick question here. Sure. Say it loud. Um, what's the prime age range for the cows? Uh, usually a cow, and it depends on the facilities, but usually a cow will milk up to about six years old. From one, one year to six? Uh, to six? About 18, is it 18 months, I think, when they can first calf, okay. and then from there to about five to six years old. And then another question, is there any benefit to the urine? No. No, nope, not question. at this point. It's a, it's a very good no, question. Yeah, there's no questions, a bad question. Yeah, because I mean, they're, they're actually going to yeah. the bathroom. Yeah. 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 Water and fertilizer. Okay, so when these alley scrapers come in to follow the process through, is they, they scrape right in this underground pit. These pits run throughout the farm because there's more barns, as you can see, straight that way. Um, but it goes into a big central pit and we'll walk over right on the other side of this building. Okay. So we can walk over there and this is the main collection area for all the manure. <clears throat> it comes, it's just a, there's an agitator running over there. It just keeps it stirring constantly. That's, it's, it's... Well, yeah, there's one here and there's one on the other side. Okay. So it, they both just keep it turning so that none of the solids or heavier material will settle out. It just keeps everything agitated. There's a probe here that once this pit gets full, it touches this probe right here and it turns this pump on. This is the pump that pumps straight into the digester. This pumps at about 625 gallons per minute. So when it runs, it usually runs for, I believe, three to five minutes at a time. That's it. So we take in a pretty good slug of manure every time it gets full. Mm -hmm. um, is there any questions on this end of it with the manure management? Go ahead. So I don't know if somebody asked, but what type of digester is, like, do they have here? It's an anaerobic digester, which is, it, this is the plug flow design. So there's there's two, may, there may be more, but there's a complete mix and a plug flow, and this is the plug flow. So what, what goes in 18 to 21 days later comes out the other end. So complete mix complete mix plug. So Andy, um, you've got this pump that's running about 650 GPM yep. for about three to five minutes. Yep. What style of pump do you have to use and what kind of pressure do you have to have to be able to, um, with a plug flow, you know, when you're pushing in, it provides the pressure to push it out the other Correct. side. So, I mean, what kind of head pressure do you have to have to be able to deal with a couple million gallons? The, there is really no head pressure on this pump. Um, all it has to do is pump into a space where, see, on the on the far end of the digester, there's no restriction. So as okay. long as I can pump in, it'll overflow on the other side. Okay. So, so you're not going against a fluid, because when I think of plug flow, I'm imagining like, you know, physically I have to push something yeah, in there. No. To, so the design no. of it's such that it's yeah. uh, kind of a gravity. It's a, like Mike said, it's a complete mixed plug flow. So every there's agitation in the digestion, everything's stirring yep. constantly. So it's not like there's a plug in there and you gotta push this plug around. Okay. It's just when you add more in, it comes out the other side. So it's more like a, a cup of water that you're just pouring onto the top. Yeah. Yep. Basically, yep. you know, you're going in at 8% total solids. Yep. So it's not like you're pushing 100%. You know, you're not yeah. pushing like that feed over there and pushing that kind of stuff. You're doing 8% total solids. So. 92% of it is a lot. Yep. And it mixes in sections? Yeah, it mixes in zones. There, There's not actually, the first chamber it goes in has a wall, so it's actually kind of a section. The rest of it is is open. It's a U-shape. It goes all the way to the end and comes back and then goes out. 
So it mixes in, in zones, but there's no dividers between the zones. Uh, I'm assuming it's a trash pump. Is it hydraulic powered? Or, or no, it's electric powered. The motor's on the back side. Um, How many horsepower is that pump? Uh, it's probably a 30 horse motor on it. And it's, uh, there's, on the bottom is just an impeller that is, is pitched in such a way to shoot the manure out. If we block it off on that end, it won't hurt this pump. And also, it's not like it has to pump through. So it's not a positive displacement? No. I mean, it'll chew no. up the Yes, pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, we, we know the dairy takes care of this end, and this is about as far as they go with the digester. They take care of this pump. But if for some reason a line plugs or we go to do our daily checklist and say, hey, we only got 10,000 gallons, what's going on? Then we come back here and, and look in this pit and go, oh, this pit's full or those, the alley over there's overflowing up. And then, you know, then we know we have a problem either here or in the line and then we take care of it from there. So how, how often does a situation like that occur? Um, um, not terrible often, but it does happen. Uh, I would say maybe once every three months or so, where something will either get wedged in this pump if one of the one of the workers throws a glove in there and it plugs it up, or you know if a piece of wood falls in there or something plugs it up. Okay. So it's it's not real frequent, but we have had it a few times. And then in that case, do you have to drain everything and go in there? And fish no, water? we can pull this pump straight up and get it out. This this pit's about eight feet deep. So it's not a real deep pit. So we can, yeah, pull the pump right out. And you can see, this is a cam lock fitting. You, you can flip these levers up and this whole thing will come right apart. Do you like your job? I do. Yeah. Usually smell like cow manure at the end of the day, but you get used to it. <laughs> it's you with digesters, it's usually a different pro or a different thing you're working with every day. So there's, it's not a, not a repetitious thing some days. I'm working with electrical, some days it's plumbing, other days it's diesel mechanics, some days you're unplugging pumps and getting covered in cow manure. I mean, there, there's a huge variety to, to what we do. And in order to do what we do, you have to be well-rounded in multiple fields. If you're a diesel expert, that's great, but the engine, we don't work on the engines every day. You know, if you're if you're a pump expert, that's great, but we don't do that every day. So you have to be kind of well-rounded in in everything, the things you know. Yep, exactly. You have to know a little bit of everything to to make it work. Is the pay worth it? It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's we'll head around and head back up towards the digester.